you don't really want to be doing these things. Listen in to find out. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 362, Things That Could Make Your Home Look Cheap. Sorry, guys, but there are some things that our people are doing that really takes away from the look of their home. And we're going to cover some of those things today. Don't be insulted if you're doing some of these things. We all have or mm-hmm. are doing some of these things. It's just good to talk about it, air it out, and then think about it and look around at your house and see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's, you may say, you know what, I know this might not be something a lot of people will like, but I'm going to do it anyway. And that's fine too. But we, but at least go forward with the knowledge and you can make your own decisions that way. Exactly. Go forth with the knowledge. We always, <laughs> we really encourage everyone to do that. Yes. Really good idea. Good, 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 good. We have some news to tell you. First, Mm -hmm. we want to tell you that we were together and it was so much fun. And yet again, we were together and no one took a picture of us. I (laughs) could not believe that because that's when my family said, where's the picture of you and Kelly together? And I said, "Uh, Uh, it does not exist. It must not have happened. But seriously, we (laughs) were together and I, I have a boarding pass and all of that to prove it. We went to a podcast conference so we could get even more information to bring you even a better show because we love doing this so much and we love seeing each other. And so it was super fun. We met Mm -hmm. some great other people, uh, men and women, but some really cool women Mm -hmm. that are doing some other podcasts. And we're hoping to bring you information about their podcasts as the year rolls along. So we're we're making friends, uh, continuing friendships that we made, I should say, while we were in Orlando at Podcast Movement. Um, really interesting, very exciting things going on in our podcast space. And let me tell you, you guys really truly are front runners because there's just a heck of a lot of people out there in the world that don't know anything about podcasts. So kudos to you for finding out about podcasts, for enjoying them, for and thank you for listening mm-hmm. to ours. Um, so it was super fun, it wasn't it? It was super, oh, super fun. Oh, it was, it was. And I mean, it was a good learning experience, a good networking experience. And I always love seeing you, Kelly. And it, you're so fun to hang out with. I knew it was going to be a blast, even though I was like, oh, I didn't even want to pack my bags. But once I got there, I was so excited and it was so fun being with you. Oh, yeah. No, I, cu- I really honestly couldn't wait because I knew that we were going to get a lot of mm-hmm. good info. And it, was, and it was quick, but it was fun and um, definitely well worth it. And while we were there, we had some good conversations about what's been going on with our podcast and our store. Mm-hmm. Kind and of a sofa, a sofa conversation. Kind of. Definitely. We were on a mm-hmm. sofa, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we want to share with all of you, if you haven't heard already by reading Anita's blog or maybe by this point, my blog, uh, we have decided to close Bespoke Decor. Now, no tears and no mm-hmm. sadness. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a couple of more days. Today's uh, August 28th. We're going to be closing the last day of August. So that's 31 days, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have a few more days to get whatever you might want. Um, But you know what, you guys, our heart is with the podcast and Mm -hmm. we feel like we connect with you in this way. And it's such a special way to connect, but unlike even our blogs and certainly unlike running a shop, you know, we loved the shop and kind of came to us as uh, an opportunity. And we, you know, we just jumped on it because it sounded like it was going to be so much fun. And when we started, we didn't even really know, was it going to be a pop-up store? Was it going to be Mm -hmm. a long-term thing? You know, how are we going to do all this? But, um, you know, we tend to say yes to things a lot (laughs) and that's good. So it was really great. And um, thank you so, so, so much for everybody who shopped with us or even Mm -hmm. browsed with us and just gave us a, you know, a, a pat on the back or a thumbs up and just say, hey, you know, you guys are doing a great job. Love what you have. We appreciate that. We love the people that we worked with, um, you know, the, the, the individual sewers, all these people that helped make Bespoke what it was. And we hope that you treasure whatever you may have purchased for your whole life long. And thank you. 
Yes, I think, yes, I really enjoy doing it. And so I'm really, I'm not sorry we did it. I'm very happy we did it. And, you know, sometimes it's just time for things to come to an end, uh, and which is the case here, so that we can really focus on the podcast. And that's kind of what the discussion we had is what is it that we, we really need to focus our attention on one of these things? What is it going to be? Because we really need to be all in. And we decided, both of us, it was not an argument at all. We were in complete agreement that it was the podcast because we both feel like this is how we really serve listeners the most is by the podcast. And I'm glad that the feedback we're getting, uh, comments all over the place are that glad you're keeping the podcast so we're thrilled to be doing the podcast. We're very excited about it. We've it's always been a love of ours from the very beginning, and so uh, yeah, so it's it's exciting to have more time to really focus on it and to really make sure we're providing the absolute best content that we can. So today's topic: things that could make your home look a little cheap. I think I've done a lot of these. I yeah, really do. You know? And sometimes mm-hmm. it's just stuff like you gloss over it. You don't even really think about it. You mm-hmm. might not even consider these things. It's, um, it, uh, and you know what? Having an expensive, luxurious, comfortable style is really not about money. So when we use the word cheap mm-hmm. today, we are not talking about dollar signs or how much you spent on something. It's how yeah. you put it all together creatively and, and giving, each thing that you put in your home, real consideration, because really your home should be the best reflection of you. Yeah. I like to think of it, if you want to do a fashion analogy, uh, it would be similar to someone putting on a beautiful dress. It wouldn't even have to be an expensive dress, but her slip is showing. To me, that's going to ruin the <laughs> okay. whole look. Who wears slips? Well, Hello? I know. I know nobody wears slips anymore, <laughs> but that's what I could think. That's the best I could do. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> if anybody does wear slips, you know, again, we're okay with that. <laughs> and God bless you. But I don't, I don't, I'm not sure who's doing that. Let's bring, we could bring those back. But yes, okay. we get what you're saying. Right. Like you yeah. go to you go to these lengths, but then, you know, maybe, you know, you've got chip nail polish or, you know, you you bat- you have your flip. It's not on. about money. It's totally not about money. I absolutely agree with you. There's just little things that you do that somehow just take a they chip away at the yes. looks that you're wanting chip, to chip. present. You're right. That's mm-hmm. what happens because it's it's not like a big thing. It's usually not a big thing. It's these little things that add up and when you sort of scan around the room. Not that anybody that you're mm-hmm. friends with should be coming into your house no. and being like, oh, this looks cheap. But you know, you, if you're listening to the show, you have such pride of home. You care. So mm-hmm. these may be things. We're just going to shine a flashlight on them mm-hmm. yeah. and the virtual flashlight. And you can decide whether or not you want to alter them or whether or mm-hmm. not you're doing them or whether or not you don't care if you're doing them. And that's all up to you. Right. So Are the you- first one I have on my list is really easy to fix, but it just might be, not be something you know about. If your pillow inserts are too small, that makes your pillows not look their best. Oh, good one. Yes. Right? Well, they just look kind of crinkled and and, 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 and just flat. I don't know. Right. They just right. and then have the, that perky look. Yeah. And then like the pillow cover just looks too big and it's kind of, yeah. So if your inserts mm-hmm. are too small, whether you use down or whether you use poly or you'd use down alternative or whatever you're using, your pillow insert should be two inches bigger than your pillow cover in a general sense. That's true. Unless it's a really small pillow or a bolster, then you are going to use it the same size. Correct. Now, an- another thing to think about is because I have a situation where I have some pillow shams and the pillows in there, I guess just weren't that fluffy or maybe the shams were just made a little too big and they look terrible. I mean, I'm thinking about a couple of mine that I have right now. And I'm thinking they look really bad, but when I So one thing you can do is put a second pillow in there. Two thin ones uh, can usually fluff it up. But I know I have a couple where I, when I put the two in, it was looked like it was about to burst out. So I'm going to have to find some in between. But the pillows, you know, a sleeping pillow, you can get in different plumpness. So I think I'm just going to have to switch out those pillows I have in those shams. 
That's a good trick. Mm-hmm. A tip and a trick. Oh, and then and speaking of and speaking of pillows that don't look perfectly fluffed because the insert is too small, you know, you can have a similar situation with a duvet that looks a little kind of flat and limp. So another thing that you can do, and I know when I worked at a store, we did this all the time, and I've done this in my own home, is putting two duvets inside a duvet cover if you really want to plump it up. And it looks very luxurious if you do that. Now, when you did that at home, did you sleep with it like that? I can't sleep under the duvet. I'm in Texas. It's too hot. Oh, okay. So that was just for show. It just looks, yeah, looks only. Okay. Registers. Um, I'm not talking about cast registers. I'm talking about the ones that are in your house that let the hot air, you know, the heat and the air conditioning flow around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. That's a pet peeve of mine. And they are easily changed. Or if they can't be changed, Mm -hmm. they could at least be painted the color of the wall. So they fade away as much as possible. Yeah, I've I've got to get mine changed out, but I don't <gasps> have to look. As, well, no, 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 they're painted the color, but I don't okay. have the nicer looking ones. But it's on my list. I keep thinking I've got to do that, and then I forget. Okay, they're not inexpensive if you have to get a custom size. So look mm-hmm. around. Uh, there's yeah, Reggie, to- Reggie, Reggie, Reggio registers. I can put the link okay. in the show notes, something like that. But then I just tripped upon these are for ones that are on the wall. So ones that are vertical, they're actually plastic and they look, I now I've only seen them on the internet, but they look good and the reviews are good. So that's a possibility, you know, for one that you have just, you know, not close to the baseboard, maybe Mm -hmm. up higher, Mm -hmm. or I have several in the floor. And, but I know a lot of homes are created with these in the wall. And sometimes if it's a, builder house or a spec house or one that you didn't get to design from the get-go, they put them in the stupidest places, Mm -hmm. like in the middle of the wall. Well, here's the thing. Even if you did get to design it, because I did, was involved in this every step of the way, the design on this house. But when it comes to those registers, when it comes to the air conditioning ducts, because I had a big discussion with my builder about it, the AC guy comes in and unless you're here the day he comes... It's just, it is what it is. And even if you're here, a lot of times they have to route it a particular way. So, you know, around other things. So you don't always have a choice on where those go. So just keep that in mind. That, but is, I, that is true. Yeah. But I am going to go look at the ones that you're talking about because I think the ones I have are very ugly. You, you guys, it makes such a difference. And mine are in the ceiling, but they're ugly. Yeah. And and so maybe these rubbery plastic ones would be good for you because they'll look good, but a mm-hmm. God thing that fell, would fall out, you know, because I have very heavy metal ones, like cast mm-hmm. iron ones. Mine are, mine are, oh, well, they're metal. They're not cast iron. In the floor. But if you have this beautiful floor and then all of a sudden you have this white metal register that looks like it came from, you know, just like the hardware store, Mm -hmm. that really detracts from your Mm -hmm. look of your floor. And it's so easy to replace it or take it out. This is what I did in our prior house. I just took them all out and I spray painted them all black. So they just faded away. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing how there's all these little touches in custom homes that sometimes the spec houses don't have, but it is easy to change those little things out. Oh, you just slid me right into my third one. Basic builder grade lighting. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. You've all Mm -hmm. seen it. And I hate this word, but people reference it. The boob light. (laughs) You've heard that, right? Hey, I had it. Um, heard it. I've had them. <laughs> <laughs> How many boob lights have you had? Um, <laughs> quite a few. Quite a few. Uh, more than a pair. Yeah, I don't like that phrase, but um, it it does is is very descriptive of what that light looks like. You've probably all mm-hmm. seen that light. It kind of looks like a boob. I mean, that's where it came from. But that is just a flush mount light that you could probably replace with any light. Mm-hmm. You could. Do another flush mount that's a lot better. You could do a small chandelier. You could do anything. Oftentimes you see these. I mean, I guess a builder grade, you know, lighting could be anywhere, but lots of times they put them in hallways. It's just like, oh yeah, put that up. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, if you've got one of those, lighting is not expensive. 
nice lighting is not expensive. So you can look all around, I mean, Wayfair, Lamps Plus, places like that. You don't have to go to circle lighting. You don't have to get something that is, you know, $800, probably for maybe even under a hundred dollars, like maybe 60 to $80. You could replace that boob light with a really nice flush mount mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and use the opportunity, particularly in a hallway, just to make a statement with the lighting. Is Maybe in the hallway, there's not much else going on. You could have a really mm-hmm. cool light that would just be what you need in that space to make it personalized. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, another thing that I've noticed and I'm really, I've been guilty of a lot in the past is the mass produced art. And you know what I'm talking about. It's the art that you go to the discount store to buy. And it's the same art that everyone has. It's, it's mass produced. It doesn't look special. And maybe it was the right color or or the right size that you needed for the space. And, and I, I mean, I, but I've got to cut people a break on this one. Buying artwork is tough. It's very hard to find stuff you like. And it's, it's, it's hard to find the sources and then it's hard to find something that's unique for you. So I get that this not one is if you listen to decorating tips and tricks. Well, I know I was going to say, we'll, we'll link up the episode, but we listed several sources and I've actually just redone some stuff, uh, rearranged some things in one of my rooms. So i I was just thinking, I really need to buy some more artwork and I'm thinking I need to pull that up and see what some of those sources were, because I'm thinking I'm going to do buy something, but you buy something that's meaningful to you. And it does, again, like we've said, it does not have to be expensive. I found some fun travel posters that I love that were very inexpensive and just had them framed. And, and again, they were standard size frames. It was not expensive framing. So there's so much that you can do. You listen to the episode and you're going to enjoy the artwork more if it's something that you really put some care into selecting. Yeah, that's a good one. And that I think you know, almost everybody. I mean, I know I did that. You don't want to look to look like the doctor's waiting room. Yeah. And even if you, even if you like it, I remember buying, I think it was, um, not a triptych, but I think it was two, um, from Ballard and you know, they weren't super cheap and and I just really liked them, but here it was, they went with my room Mm -hmm. and right colors, you mean? Yeah. And they were uh right colors and they were flowers. So they were pretty. Uh, but here it was. I bought it from a catalog. So mm-hmm. everybody in the whole world could have that if they wanted, you know, I mean, okay, not everybody in the world, but a lot of people could purchase that from Ballard. So I could go into somebody else's house in my neighborhood and they might have this exact same art. That's not what I'm looking for in art mm-hmm. these days. So, you know, that was several years ago, a couple of houses ago. And I, I remember actually I think I sold them at a yard sale or something. And I remember kind of like as the lady was buying them, like, eh, like I still kind of liked them. So you you might like it, but try not to – just try not to <laughs> try buy – Try not to like uh, them? Is well, that just, what you're saying? Just try not to buy art that is so accessible to everyone because it's not that now interesting. That sounds a little snobby. No, 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 no. That is not snobby. Okay. I'd rather see somebody make – something enlarge something that their kids did okay. or a photograph or you know just something personal mm-hmm. rather than just yeah oh yeah that's pretty sure it's fine mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. offensive and it's in my colors mm-hmm. let me put that up on the wall and look at it every day of my life <laughs> no <laughs> find something that really moves you And maybe that's just the piece that is going to give your room a little tension or a little interest or people can say, oh my gosh, you know, that's so fabulous. Is that from a trip? Is that something Mm -hmm. you did? Did Mm -hmm. you paint that? Oh, do you know the artist? Or go to all those places that we listed in that other episode, which is great resources for um, small time artists who are trying to make it big. And so who knows, Mm -hmm. maybe you could buy something and years later it'll be really valuable. Well, that's true. And my little thing that I love are are uh, portraits, are old portraits, antique portraits of, of people. Yeah, so so cool. I have some paintings and some drawings of real people, and uh, I love that. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today, and let them know your friends at DTT sent you. 
BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt so what i don't love is a lot of plastic in my house oh you are speaking my love language so what i suggest to everyone is just replace a few plastic things with some non-plastic items How about, just imagine if you have all plastic big spoons and spatulas and things like that. What if you switched them over to wood? And what Mm -hmm. if you put them in a pretty pitcher or a pretty Mm -hmm. canister or something on your countertop? Or even just having them in the drawer. When you open the drawer, you'll see these lovely wooden spoons. How about a bamboo or wooden utensil holder in your drawer rather than a rubber one? Uh, It just makes a big difference. I remember when I first, when we were first finished with this kitchen. I think the the moment that I knew ah, is when I had my bamboo extendable utensil holder and I put it in the drawer and I filled it all up. I remember closing the drawer and then I just had to open it one more time to look at it because (laughs) we had not had a kitchen for eight months. And so I I just can't even tell you how good that felt. And I was for sure not going to put a plastic one in there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a little thing, but it makes Mm -hmm. such a difference. Oh, it does. And speaking of little things, I wanted to add to our discussion of artwork. When your artwork is too small, I think that's another issue. And that's something that we see a lot of, Kelly. Yeah. Our walls, that the artwork is just too small. So then, you know, the person knows something's not right. So instead of replacing the artwork with something bigger, they just add more artwork and then it can really feel confused uh, because some of the artwork's grouped together and some of it isn't. And it's really going to feel a lot better in most cases to just replace it with one big piece of art. Agreed, for sure. Mm-hmm. And the same holds true for the rug size. We've talked to you guys about oh, this yes. before, but mm-hmm. that's something that you're like, eh, you know, I think I joked at one point, like a bath mat in front of your 
sofa. You really don't want to be doing that. And you could have an absolutely stunning room. And then you have this little postage stamp of a rug, you know, it's like, "Eh," you know, you should have just gone for the bigger one or layer it or something like that. And we can reference the rug episode. So you can have a listen uh, to the specifics on that. But the, the amazing thing is how that doing something like that can really throw your room off. And that's going to be what people notice rather than all the beautiful things you have in the room. They'll, they're going to notice that that rug uh, feels a little off. And also the furniture sets. I mean, this bears repeating. Don't do that. That just really not only dates your room, but it just makes it look like, yeah, the whole set was $800. So I just got the whole thing. I, I don't care what you spent on it. It it's not what's happening now. So just mm-hmm. break it up. That's so mm-hmm. easy to do. So move things around. Even if you want to keep the whole set, put a part of it in a different room. Um, and I think that will really not only make your whole look feel more expensive, but also, and I'm using that word expensive in kind of air quotes, also freshen up the room. Mm-hmm. And that reminds me of something I, again, see all the time, and I've definitely been a victim of this too, and I call it being held hostage by your furniture or by your decor. So I don't care whether you inherited it, it came as a gift, maybe you even bought it, but there's probably something in your house that you really cannot stand anymore. It's just something that's really bugging you. And it's that thing in the room that's just not working. And it's driving you nuts. So what I'm going to say is get rid of it. Go ahead, move it out, sell it, give it away, do whatever you need to do to get it out of the room. It's, there's a reason you don't like it. It, it probably just doesn't even, it's not even working in the room, but so many people hold on to that because they feel bad about moving it on out. But that's the thing that's probably throwing your room off. So go ahead and move it out and you, I'm telling you, you're going to feel so much better when you do. Excellent. Okay. Um, here's something that, eh, I don't know, I could get a little in trouble, but you know what? You guys love me. And if you don't, then I guess you'll just stop listening. <laughs> oh, but what's it going to be now? <laughs> we're talking about, you know, things that make, make your home look a little, eh, you know, on the cheaper side. Again, air quotes, cheaper side. Mm-hmm. Stuff that's too cute, you know, in oh, a kid's the room. Too cute. Yeah, in a kid's room, fine. You know, a nursery up to sort of teens, what have you. You know, that's they're little. It's cute. Then it's their private space, mm-hmm. what have you. But not all around your house. You know, not little cute like caddy figurines and things like that, or sayings and whatnot. You know, just it's to kind of drag everything down. And you know, this is very specific to the item. So I throw this out there as just a a general cautionary tale in a sense. But but you might be looking in your item and saying, no, you know, this live, love, laugh sign is perfect and it goes great and I love it in my entry or what have you. Then that's fine if it's really working. But what we do here when we're talking to you is just giving you ideas and tips and trying to give you fresh eyes on what's going on in your house. And so there might be some things that might just fall into the too cute category and they need to go someplace else. Yes. And speaking of that, speaking of things that are too cute, how about just too much, too many little things out? It may not even be too cute, but it's just too much of it because too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Especially these smaller things that really start, when you've got a lot of little things, it starts really feeling cluttered and that can really throw a room off right there. So again, you're going to want to, and if you have some collection of a lot of little things, you're going to try, going to try to corral them under a cloche, into a little cabinet, in in a tray. And what doesn't fit, put it away because it's probably just too much. Yes. And this other thing that I'm going to say kind of goes hand in hand, not so much, it's not about being cute, but themes, themes and decorating, coastal, farmhouse, call it whatever you will, fill in the blank. When it's sliding from style and look to theme, you've gone too far right? You like the beach, even if you're on the beach, 
you don't need to hit me over the head with the shells. You know, just a few <laughs> things here and there. I got it. You know, you like farmhouse look. I don't great. think you did get it. <laughs> Oh, I got it. I got it. I can hear the shell. Um, you know, th- you know what I'm saying? It's like what, like the gentleman that I bought my house from, lovely man, but he wanted my house to be a Victorian house uh, to the point where it was almost like an old sad museum people wouldn't come to, right? He was going to be upset if I changed things. That's the way wow. he wanted it to be. Uh, and that's what it looked like. There were doilies and it was, you know, oh, but, wow. but it looked like, you know, a abandoned <laughs> old Victorian museum. So if you... Speaking of the slips, yeah, nobody uses doilies anymore either. You, well, I, I'm not suggesting that anyone does. No, I know. But that, they were here. But um, yeah, so, you know, don't grab onto a theme. You want to develop a style, right? And a, a theme is not the same thing. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And I think that is well said. I think that is absolutely the case. And I want to add to that or go on to the next one, I should say. And that is too much furniture in the room. Yeah. You know, too much. And because you know what happens? You if you if you're like us and you're collectors and you love things, you're buying something new, you're buying, you're buying, you're buying. Well, if everything's coming in but nothing's going out, you're gonna end up with some where you can't get through. There's things piled up. In fact, I had stacks of chairs piled up in my house in the garage apartment that I just had to um, send off somewhere else. Oh, and that's hard, I, isn't I, it? Well, yeah, I guess it was a little bit hard. I have some more going. Saturday and and um that's fine. I mean you just you just have to do it. Yeah. Oh, you know, I have a note here. When we're talking about this too small of a rug, mm-hmm. I wanted to mention to you guys, I think I told you uh, so now I'm a Better Homes and Garden blogger. Thank you. Uh, Better Homes and Gardens and we are sharing things from their collection at Walmart. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to this great rug that I got. Um, incredibly priced, this white and black, it's kind of like charcoal um, striped rug. So I wanted to mention that to you guys, and I'll put the link in the show notes. It's fabulous and very reasonable. Uh, I put it in my kitchen, and it made such a difference. You know how we talked about like uh, rugs under tables and whatnot? Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow, I'm loving it. It's great. Is this, a, is this is a rug you put under your table? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I yeah. Can't wait to see it, it made such a difference in there. It really just softened up the whole room because, you know, there's so many hard textures, uh, mm-hmm. hard surfaces, I should say, in a kitchen. It added some great texture. Well, that's a good point. Uh, so, talking about the clutter and everything along those lines, how about too many photos sitting out? Yeah. Remember when that used to be the look is a lot of photos. Right. Where you couldn't have too many. Well, yeah. guess what? You can have too many. <laughs> and so if you do, just weed them out. Just have your very favorites there. I'm not saying don't have pictures, but I think too many is is not going to be good for you. Yeah, it, it it tends to then go to sort of the clutter. And sometimes the frames tend to the cute side too, depending on, you know, who's in, you know, what, you know when you got the frame and all of that. So that might be something you want to take a, a good look at, a nice discerning eye and maybe take a few away, put them away, rotate them around, something like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the things that we talked about today, you know, you may not be happy experiencing any of this in your own home and maybe you are but you love what you all your photos or you love your plastic spoon and that's all fine again it's just to sort of open your eyes to see the possibilities because sometimes we just gloss over what we've got going on in our own house and it would be so easy to make some of these changes and i guarantee you it makes a big difference mm-hmm. absolutely do you have a crush for us today? I do. And this is my favorite makeup. I don't think I've sh- sh- shared this before. So I thought this would be nice to share because it's so hard to find makeup that that we like. And mine is the Jane Iredale's Pure Pressed Base Mineral Foundation. And I've been using it for a couple of years and I really like it. I'll include a link to it. But it's I never the- even heard of that brand. 
Well, Soft Surroundings carries it and uh-huh. it's other places too, uh, but I'll include a link to it online so you can get it. But I, I really like it. It's It works well and it takes off the shine if you've got that. I know you your, your skin's so beautiful. You don't even use makeup, do you? Oh my goodness. You're so silly. Didn't you say that? Didn't you say you don't use foundation? Oh yeah, I don't use foundation, but yeah, I do wear makeup. Yeah, I don't wear a foundation, but maybe I should try. Um Okay, that's funny because you had sort of a beauty crush. I also have a crush in the beauty department. It's my new blow dryer. It's got a really weird name. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but I love it. And it makes such a difference because it makes your hair sort of nice and smooth. I don't know. Oh, you know, there's I like that. The blow dryer. You and I both have curly hair. So yeah, I mean, I and I didn't for years. So sometimes I'm like, oh, still surprised that my hair gets wavy and stuff. Because when we were in Orlando at Podcast Movement, oh my goodness. I mean, I had <laughs> talk about Texas big hair. I don't know what state. I had like several. <laughs> And Florida, Georgia, and Texas big hair. It was crazy because it was raining so hard there and humid. I wish yeah, I had this blow humid. dryer with me. But yeah, it's baby lytral. It's really a strange name. Baby, the word baby, L-T-R-L. I'm not sure how you pronounce it or what that so stands for. Is this different than a regular hair dryer? It's, well, it's a professional hair dryer. But it uh, aren't they all? Darling? I guess they all are. But th- I got really great reviews because mine uh, last time Peter and I were going to go out for dinner together, which isn't often, uh, where we can escape and you know just go out the two of us. And I get out of the shower and we're like, yeah, of course I'm running late. And I plug in my my regular blow dryer and it it just goes nothing. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm looking at it, it looked like it was all sort of hot embers inside. And I thought, oh, Uh-oh. this is bad. So, yeah, I just whipped my hair back and I was not going to give up a dinner. So I whipped my hair back in a wet ponytail and off we went. And I said, I'm going to get a new blow dryer. And so I got this one. I'm very happy with it. It has a lot of uh, like control, easy to use, but you can really control it. So I won't go very into nice. further into detail. You can read the reviews. I'll put a link in the show notes. Awesome. Go ahead. Clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free... That's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for 
$250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Okay, our listener question today, I'm really excited about this one, not only because it's a fun question and I think it could help a lot of people, but because Lee W is the daughter of Donna M, who I adore. Mm, yeah, Donna M has been uh, you know, reading my blog. I'm probably reading Anita's too. She's definitely been a listener from probably like day one. She's in my garden group mm-hmm, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. She is just a wonderful woman, always there with a lovely comment. And, you know, I feel like other, even though I've never met her in person, but anyway, she's lovely. So I'm sure her daughter is equally as lovely. And I know they share the podcast together and they've told me that they talk about it afterwards and whatnot. So to get to Lee's question, she has a guest room question. She lives in a sort of a unique situation in downtown Chicago. So it's somewhat urban, but I think a lot of people will be able to relate to this. It's a, a duplex. And so her bedrooms are downstairs. And so she has windows that are more on the horizontal rather than on the vertical because you know, you're dealing with it being on a lower level. Uh, but you could experience this in really any house where the windows are sort of more squat and longer. And um, then she has a question about how to treat these windows and what to do on the wall. There's just, it's a small room, small sort of square, and there's the bed basically in a small dresser, but what to do on that wall? Because even though it's a small room, it's a big expanse of blank wall. Uh, Again, it's a guest room. And so the question is twofold. How do you treat that window? And there's a little special thing going on there that we'll explain. And what would we suggest for the wall decor in this small room with a blank wall? Well, uh, I wanted to say too, I think the thing is, this is a basement room and just the top part of the room is actually above ground. Mm-hmm. So the windows are not a normal placement. They are right up next to the ceiling. And they maybe only go down about two feet. Mm-hmm. So it's squished up at the ceiling. It doesn't go down to the... So curtains all the way down to the floor, I think, are not really going to look good with this window. So, I mean, I would definitely suggest something just inside, you know, some shades or blinds, maybe some bamboo shades just are covering the window and not something to the floor on that. Uh, But the other issue was that the bed, uh, there's a bed there underneath the window. But the problem is since there's a door on one side, the bed couldn't fit under the window. It shifted over to the side. Right. So it couldn't be centered on the window. Right. And I think that's the real problem in the room that's probably driving her nuts Mm -hmm. because you just, you want so badly to center that bed under the window, but you can't because this door swings out. So I did have a a suggestion on that room. Bring it. And that is to angle the bed in that corner. Ooh, you devil. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think there's another way around it because she did say she thought about putting the bed on a different wall, but it just wasn't working. It really needed to be on this wall, but why couldn't Mm -hmm. you just angle it? And then it's not going to look weird that it's not, you know, that it's not fitting directly underneath the window. So that would be my suggestion. So, oh, I like that one. Okay. My, and you could put a big plant or something behind it to sort of fill in that space in the corner. Lee, that's a good idea. Okay. I had a very different idea Mm -hmm. for that space. Um, but I'm kind of liking your idea too. Um, yes, the, the type of window it is, I would not put curtains all the way down. In fact, I mm-hmm. wouldn't make much of a fuss about it at all. I think there's a privacy screen that goes down that's already there. Maybe oh, that's perfect. all you need, okay. right? Or you could put a natural woven or something on top of mm-hmm. it, but I wouldn't draw any more attention to it. I would just True. enjoy the natural light that you're getting, but I wouldn't make a big deal about that window, particularly since the way the bed is placed now, it's off center. So what I was thinking about the room is, yes, that that the off center placement of the bed necessitated by the door is kind of the bugaroo in this room. So I was thinking, just, I would treat it more like a powder room, like, uh, because it's a small room. 
and just make it a jewel box. I think I'd wallpaper it. I think I would just do thinking really special Mm -hmm. in there just to sort of, you know, Mm -hmm. then you're not going to notice that the window's off center or that the bed's off center to the window too much. If you had some beautiful wallpapers in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if, if Lee, if you're not a wallpaper person, then I would do something on that blank wall that you're talking about, but something big, girlfriend, something real big, like, like a mural or some adhesive wallpaper, um, maybe even a mural of the skyline of Chicago or something, you know, it's, if you're, it's a guest room and you kind of, if, you know, if you're, if you're really loving living in Chicago, you could do something like that, it, but it could mm-hmm. be anything. Um, but something really dramatic, I think would be so cool because it would be unexpected in that small space. It right now, it's very beautiful. It's very, simple and anybody who would sleep there would be very happy to very mm-hmm. comfortable mm-hmm. it's very safe and that's good it's a beautiful color it's sort of like a taupey color wouldn't you say anita sort of like mm-hmm. toasty almost right, really pretty the bed looks super comfy and you could you could so just leave it like that lee and it would be beautiful but i think because it's a small room i think in a room you're not going to be in all the time i think you could take some a little bit of risk in there well, I love the wallpaper idea, especially if you're angling it. Then there still is something very interesting. Oh, you could do both our ideas. Bed. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking that would go very well with the angled bed because ah. you don't really need any artwork in there that way. And oh my gosh. Yes. Don't you? I mean, that's what I'm thinking. And then what if you swagged a cool shandy? over the bed mm, from the corner. Mm, because mm-hmm. if you shagged a, uh, a shandy over the bed, the way it's positioned now, right. then you'd be like, the bed's off center and the chandelier's off center. You know, yes, it would really yes. bug you. But if it's in the corner, like you're saying, you could have that come out from the back of the bed and have this really cool thing. I think that would be great. And I don't think you're going to even think about the fact that it's not, uh, there's no centering. There's no need to if it's angled. Oh, I love yeah, it. I'm I giving love, you, I'm giving I, you a I'm little virtual high five. I'm, okay, I, woo. I almost banged my microphone to give you a high five, but <laughs> Peter would be mad. He'd have to edit that out. So Lee, I hope that helped. And so let us know. And maybe you'll be like, that's crazy. I'm not moving my bed to mm-hmm. the corner mm-hmm. and I'm not putting up wallpaper. And that's fine too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but those are our ideas. <laughs> that's what we got for you today, girlfriend. That's but, right. Thank you so much for listening, Lee and Donna and everybody. We had so much fun today. I know. Thanks, Donna and Lee, for sending that in. This was so fun. And I hope that you got some ideas on how just to spruce it up. If there's if there's something that we mentioned that uh, you didn't really agree with, well, that's fine too. You, you certainly, uh, we encourage everyone to think for themselves and do what works for them in their home home. So remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, Any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.